When it comes to women in professional sports, we're in a really great season across the board. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are defining and redefining the landscape of women's basketball. And the U.S. women's national soccer team draws record crowds. So what's next for the ladies? Perhaps football? Well, it was 1972 when Title IX laws banned gender discrimination in federally funded educational activities. That opened up a world of sports to girls and women. And while change has been kind of slow to come over these last 50 years, women keep showing up and showing out, even in football. So we're talking to three women making history, one yard, one field goal, one touchdown at a time, today on Porsche. Hello and welcome. Olympic gold medalist Wilma Rudolph said, never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. And I have to believe the legendary track star would be really proud of the trailblazing blazing women you're going to meet today. My first guest is the founder and CEO of the Women's National Football Conference. Odessa O.J. Jenkins has dedicated her life to promoting equity in sports for women and girls. In the one space, some people still have a hard time picturing female athletes on the gridiron, running that ball into the end zone. So please welcome Odessa Jenkins to the show. Hey, O.J. Hey, what's up, hey, Portia? Coach. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I love that your story really takes this very interesting journey from truly the streets yes. of Watts. Mm -hmm. It's South Central. Yeah. From a basketball court to a football court. How? Yeah, you know, I think it's all about and this might sound cliche, but love of the game, mm. right? And what sports gives to us all. Yeah. It gave to me at a young age. Uh, my family was always about team, always about coming together. And it started me, with me with a football in my hand, being the only girl running around South Central LA. And then it was a basketball. But everything changed for me when I played for so many years. And mm -hmm. then in the eighth grade, my coach told me, you need to play a girl's sport. You need to do what girls do. Mm. But I always loved playing football. I always I always saw myself in football. What did you say when the coach said that? And did the coach, was the coach like, I'm sorry to say this, this is, this is where the train stops for you or like, just go do what the girls are doing? I think my coach saw talent in me, but yeah. he also saw a girl, you know, mm -hmm. and as fast as sports are progressing for girls and women. Yeah. This was this was in the mid 90s when you would have thought they right. were more progressive. We were in California, but really he couldn't see a place for me to play football. So he thought this is a talented athlete, a talented young woman. We should be she should be pursuing basketball so she can go to college and maybe go to the WNBA. At the time the WNBA wasn't even a thing. Right. So it was like it was really the option to play the highest level of sport for me. So he you thought you go to college, you mm -hmm. kill it on the basketball Killing court. It. But you, right, I love it. She's like so confident. <laughs> no self-esteem issues here and I love it. But it still wasn't deep down what you really wanted. Right? Not at all. No, no, I loved I loved playing cow college basketball. It fed that competitiveness in me. It allowed me to pay for my education. Cal yeah. Poly was a great, great uh, um, university. Yeah. But ultimately, I'm a football person, and I knew that, and I knew that deep down, and it just, it never fed me that I wasn't doing what I wanted to be doing in mm. sports. So how did you make the shift, and to what? For yeah. football. So it's a really good question because there wasn't. Right. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know that women even played football when I got out of college. Mm -hmm. the, the story goes there was a, a football player who was a good friend of mine who played college football at Cal Poly, okay. David Kellogg. And he, David, did, was an entrepreneur and decided, you know what, I'm going to start a six on six football league with just women here at the college. Okay. So that's when, that was my first time. You were like, sign me up, like, tag put me, me in, put, put me, me in coach. Team. Put, put, <laughs> put me on that team and that team. And I ended up playing there and it fed me for a little while. And then I got out of college, did all the things that we do. And I eventually moved to Dallas where my company had moved me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need, there is no way I can't play football. So I was, I was willing to were play Were you missing anyone. it? Cause you said yeah. all the things you need, that we do, you get a job, you know, you, you're going through. You get through. a job, 
you take care of your family, you do all these things, you graduate right. college, and I am still searching for how I can play football. Now I'm 26, 27, I'm far outside of college, but I'm still at my athletic peak. I get to Dallas, I'm like, you know what, I'll play football with anybody. And the Cowboys having trials, like, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just Googled women's football. Yeah. And it opened up this massive world of all these amateur leagues and flag uh -huh. and all these things. So that's how I found it, and that's how my journey began. So were you good with a flag, or were you like, I still need to, I need to put on some pads? No, I, I had to put on pads. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to play football. football. Right, right, right. Yeah, flag is awesome, but it is a different sport. It is. Um, and so for 10 years, I played in amateur leagues. I played for the U.S. national team, and I... I was a, I was one of the top running backs on the on the planet, mm -hmm. and that fed me. And it did more than that. It made me realize that there's not just an opportunity for me to realize my dream there's on the field. For, for there's, more, there's, for there's a business opportunity. So here. tell me about the National Women's Football Conference. Yes. So the WNFC, the, the Women's National Football Conference, is a tackle and flag professional football league, one of the fastest growing leagues in the country. We have 17 teams mm -hmm. from Seattle, Washington, to Washington. In DC. And you started when? We started five years ago. We're only five years old. And they're already 17? Yes. That's impressive. Yes. We're growing. We're growing. Sponsored by, sponsor, we got sponsors. Um, and so for the last five years, we've been growing this league and teams have been coming. Over a thousand women play in this league. Y'all have a team right here in and Atlanta. And Atlanta starting yes. in the spring of 2025, yes, right? Yes, the Atlanta Truth. Yeah. Um, we'll be playing football right here in Atlanta. But yes, this is for all intents and purposes, people from 20 different countries fly here to play tackle football in the WNFC, and this is the highest level of women's football. Wow. Yeah. How does it feel to be uh, a part of uh, just day one, game one, yeah. for so many cities, for so many girls and women who want to do this? You know, actually, women have been playing tackle and flag for decades, mm -hmm. long time. There's mm -hmm. been leagues, there have been teams. So I stand on the shoulders of so many people who have wanted to see professionalism. Right. So how, is see, how does it feel? It feels great, but there's a lot of pressure. Um, but I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the women who are saying, you know what, we don't just want to play. Yeah. We want to play professionally and we deserve that, that, that land. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, it has to feel, you, you talk about the pressure. Is yeah. some of it just too, just some of the things that we know People talk about with women, nobody's going to watch, nobody's going to go, nobody's going to attend, nobody's going to support, there's not going to be the t money, the ticket sales, and it falls off. Like, how do you deal with, like, managing all of that part of it, too? Yeah, it's like, this is someone's dream. A lot of people don't realize, like, mm -hmm. there are young women who are uprooting their whole lives mm. to move to a city to play tackle football today. And so when I say pressure, I mean the pressure of someone's dream. Someone else is making a bet on us that we're going to become mm. a business that drives revenue. So there's that part. Yeah, you yeah, got to make money is. and then you got to get butts and seats and all those things. I think the pressure of what the world says, like, I don't really care what the world thinks. I love it. You know I knew you were going to say that part. I was <laughs> I trying to put you on the teeth. I don't really care. I, I, I knew you were going to say that part. Um, but I, I, it is important to me that we succeed yeah. so that we can show one other little black girl black and brown girls How to that they can this. go create. Yeah, we're going to pause right there. But when we return, you are going to meet Raven and Maria, two members of the Atlanta Truth women's football team. One plays safety, the other is a linebacker. After the break, you'll hear why both are so very passionate about women having a play all in that football field. We'll be right back. Hey, so you like the show? Then let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok at Porsche TV Show. Thanks for coming back to the table. We're talking to OJ Jenkins. She is the founder of the Women's National Football Conference, talking about the strides that she's made already in the football arena after a career in basketball. And joining us now at the table are two amazing women blazing their own trails on the football field. Raven Santiago is a linebacker. And Maria Everhart <laughs> is a defensive back. Both play for the Atlanta Truth, a new women's football team that we talked about 
going to hit the field in the spring of 2025. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to this, ladies. So excited to have you here. Thank you. But you both have really interesting journeys how you got here. Raven, you got here playing rugby. I did. Which if yeah. we don't give rugby players some props. <laughs> yeah. Y'all playing you, football you. with no pads. <laughs> no no pads. So, so football, American football actually came from rugby when you actually look up the history and stuff. So when I started learning football, I just realized it was rugby, but for four hours. Right. So rugby is right. 40 minute, 40 minute halves nonstop. And then football is four hours. And it's very similar rules, um, very similar positions, except the stoppage is, of course, is what makes it different. Right. So. And the padding. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm tackling. Yeah, yeah. So rugby just looks looks a little more painful. Is you taking that hip full on? So we are. So with the rugby culture, um, which is something I hope to influence later on in both male and female mm -hmm. um, football, is <laughs> um, is how we tackle. So we're taught to tackle from head to toe, how to fall. Um, how to catch ourselves when we fall, how yeah. to properly tackle. And our rules are a lot more stricter than football. Like, even though you may see no padding, our injuries is not as common as you will see in, like, the NFL or, or pro. Like, I've seen a lot more injuries in my last two years of playing women's football. And not no fault of anybody's, but it's just the way we tackle within in my mm -hmm. 13 years of playing women's rugby. Gotcha. Wow. So. Wow. So then obviously you took an interest. In, we're going to do this. We're going to try this the American way, see if this works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Clearly yeah, yeah. it's yep. working, it's working out. Uh, Maria, obviously different trail for you. Definitely. Tell us more. Um, so I started off actually running track and playing basketball. Like mm -hmm. I didn't have the, you know, that's a little more aggressive <laughs> for me. Um, <laughs> what I did, I didn't actually even hit people or you didn't do much of that stuff. But I uh, came through and ended up getting a scholarship full ride for in college to actually long jump, not even run really. Wow. So I was okay. running and jumping. Yeah. yeah. Right. But clearly taking things to new heights, you know. <laughs> so then how did you end up? But, but for, was it the same thing like with OJ as a kid? You just always loved football and you were like, I really want to do this. Nah. How'd you, how'd you <laughs> end up here? How'd you end up in the stands? So I am modeling. I actually so with I play sports all my life. And something I say a lot of times is like in college, they don't really prepare athletes to go into regular life and not mm. compete again. Like, oh. it's like, that's a huge thing. Like, I played sports for 13 years, 15 years. And yeah. Like, what do you do when you go and be a regular person? Like, yeah. so then I was like, okay. It was like hanging out right at the rest of us more. You know, like, <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get the plays and, and the <laughs> positions right. Trying to work right. that you we know? didn't know we had. Yeah. I didn't even know I had five minutes left throughout the day. <laughs> like, what do I do now? Right. That's what? interesting. I never thought about that. So how would you end up then, you just say, I, same thing, I'm going to do a search for women in football? So I actually heard a lot about the lingerie league, and I was like, uh, that's Man. not my type of vibe. So I was like, yeah. well, they have to have something that isn't like that. Right. Like it has to have something that's more like traditional football. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I literally looked up like a women's football, a women's tackle football. I was like, hmm. <laughs> and then I made my transition to actually move into Atlanta. So I was like, let me look up a team there. Like, and then I came across one team and I was like, hmm. Wow. This is fun. And so you literally moved. And tell me, remind me where you moved from? Uh, Orlando, Florida. To play football mm -hmm. in Atlanta. How, what is that like when you hear? That speaks to the, the pressure, but also just the joy of creating opportunities for women like these two. Yeah, I think that the dream, the American dream of being a football star isn't limited to men wow. and boys. And I think the sooner that people get to realize that, the better. The dream of being a star, being a sports star, being a gladiator is not a man's dream. I have never heard a woman verbalize it like that, but I saw you both nodding your heads. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 the, and, and, and I think everyone would take women's sports more seriously if they realized that, yeah. right? But, and we I all wanna, just won't be on the stage. We just all, yeah, we just tap me in, coach. Yeah. Yeah. For you, when you, did you feel like empowered when it was like, here's my chance? I was, oh, no, go ahead, girl. I was going to say, uh, I remember telling my partner when we first met in about 2017 that I want to be a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I didn't really know. And what did she how, say? But she was like, oh, good. <laughs> <job>. <laughs> she was crazy. We're, all, we're both just like, ah, we don't really know how it's going to happen. Yeah. But like, I was willing to be open to any kind of path that opened up and a lot of times because I did track you know it's a very it's much more strenuous to For become sure. a pro athlete and I was like I probably can do you know something in other sports because track athletes typically can take their speed and athleticism across to other sports and mm -hmm. I was like you typically see 
track people go into football, like football players, you know, run track on their uh, off season. So I was like, let me go over there. And especially being professional, it's just like, oh, I can actually, <laughs> I, I think I can do this. this. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I want to be clear, this is tackle. Yes. yes. This is, and I, I don't want to get on trouble. 11. I don't want any, 11 on 11, 11 right? On I don't want any, <laughs> yeah. people think there's any shade for a flag, but this no. is this is contact. Yes. 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 Full what and you Mar know? Mars, Maria, <laughs> is a beast. And these, these, two are, these two are playing it down, but, like, these are some ballers, right? Yeah, yeah. that must feel so good when girls see you and knowing that they're going to be girls and, you know, and boys going, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And their parents are going. How are you feeling getting ready to make this kind of history? Uh, well, even just like a woman, uh, seeing other women play and be a part of a new community. Because like you said, I've came from rugby, so our culture is different. Our mm -hmm. rules are different, which is a beautiful culture. So shout out to the ruggers out yeah. there. Um, <laughs> so it kind of guided me into playing football. Um, the way I got into rugby was I played flag football in junior high school and ah. I'm from Bronx, New York. So our school system's a little bit different. Yeah. And the senior was like, Hey, you can just come play rugby. It's just like football. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. We're, we're going to pause right there because we're going to talk about some of the differences, just even, um, you know, the, the questions that you get, Yeah. you guys have to do this. Is, is, is that hard playing football? Yep. We're going to talk about that when we return. Stay with us. This conversation just gets better and better and better <laughs> on and off the field. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've got the coach. We've got the players of women's football tackle. That, the real deal, right? <laughs> this is so exciting, but I know this is more than just a game on the field. For all of you, this is a passion about advocacy for girls and women. Explain. Coach? Yeah, for me, I think, you know, especially in today's political environment, in today's world, a lot, so many people think, I can't imagine a woman doing X. And while the WNFC is a league, is a business, is sports, it is just that. It opens your mind to say, I can't believe a woman can, and then just let it go. Just let mm. it be. I, be, I believe show that up she show can, the rest. and yeah. she can be anything she wants to. Love it, love it. Raven. Um, I think just having a real supportive system, just knowing as a friend, as a parent, as a partner, whoever you are to someone, especially a woman who wants to achieve their dream at playing at the highest level of whatever sport, it's just being supportive. It's just knowing, like, I can do this. I made it this far because I had a great support system from my parents allowing me to go and play a, a tackle sport yeah. to com coming out to the games and just being supportive no matter where it took me. Mar. I would just say that everybody dream big. Like, do do what you want to do, mm -hmm. uh, and again, have the support of the people around you. That is very important to have people be able to go after their dreams because a lot of the times we don't get told that we can go play football. Like it's it's not often, or but we can really do anything we put our minds to. Yeah, yeah. Women are strong. What do men say? They say a lot. No, <laughs> they they say. Say. Like, they they no, but you know what? A lot of men, as a matter of fact, fifty. One percent of our like social media demographic is men and boys. It's like growing like crazy. Yeah. So so many boys. And we well, shout out to AJ Green. He mm -hmm. has been a huge part of that. He's on our board. He's a massive influencer, and he's been a big part of boys and men becoming a part of the WNFC. But what they say, you know, a lot of it is negative. You know, in terms of men and boys not really have ever seeing a woman play football. It blows mm -hmm. their mind. Like, what is that a woman? That's usually the first yeah, thing they say. Like, what is that a real woman? football? I'm like, yeah, wow. they be hidden. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Especially, no, especially when they're impressed. When they're impressed, right. when they see like, somebody make a play, right. like, yo, bro did, wait a minute, are those boobs? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, was that a ponytail? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is we get a lot of support and a lot of love, love for it. men, um, but we have to answer a lot of questions about is this legitimate and why do we play the game? Yeah. And those we won't things. even get to the pay equity thing, right? That's pay equity. What y'all, what they paying y'all? Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, they yeah. Oh, Don't my God. The yeah. glass ceiling's still being broken. <laughs> <laughs> and you all are doing a magnificent job. Tell me quickly, tell our folks where they can watch and learn uh, yes. on social media. WNFC Football, everything at WNFC Football is where they can watch it. They can go on our website at WNFCFootball.com. And where can we follow you too? On at social media? Mars.theathlete on Instagram. Okay. Um, Instagram, imperfectly underscore Santi. Nice. Thank you. I'm so excited. Like, I'm like, April. 
2025, right? Yeah, Mark in the you want. Listen, I want to you can play a little receiver, a little tight end. Or listen, <laughs> I don't want to brag too much. <laughs> but I had to help the boys a little bit <laughs> along with the football yeah, journey. You'll work. teach me how to play. You'll Coach. teach me how to play. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. This has been a great conversation. Thank you, ladies. We will be right back. Thank you. Listen, I wanted to introduce you to OJ, Maria, and Raven because they are making their mark on and off the gridiron. And I appreciate what they're doing to make other girls and women who want to make big plays on the field feel seen and heard. Thanks so much for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Be sure to be the reason why someone smiles today.